In this video, I will be showing you how to properly use a factoring company integration. Now keep in mind, you must have an invoice, which the system will automatically create for you, a rate confirmation, and a proof of delivery. Second, you will have to be sure to assign the factoring company that you have selected to any customers that you will want to be using. In order to do that, we can go hover over administration and go down to customers. Here you will see your customers list. In this case, we will be using Alamo Aluminum and CH Robinson Worldwide as examples. So first off, with Alamo Aluminum, we will go over to the right hand side where the pencil icon is to edit the customer. Once we are in this new window, we can go over to the advanced tab and look over at the payment type label. Now here, we can click on the arrow and we have to make sure that this is on quick pay. Once we select quick pay, the factoring company label will pop up. Once again, we will select on the arrow and select the factoring company that you will want to be using. In this case, we're using factoring loves as an example. Once you have selected that, you can go ahead and save and we will proceed to do the same for CH Robinson worldwide. Next, we will need to create categories for both of our rate confirmation and proof of delivery. This step is very important because at this point in time, the system does not know what the names of your rate confirmation and proof of delivery are. So, in order to create categories, we can go head over to the administration tab and go down to imaging categories. Now here, we will go to the add button and give our rate confirmation a name. So here we would just be going to rate confirmation in all caps, make sure it's active and save. Now we will go again to the add button and give our POD, which is proof of delivery, a name. In this case, we will be calling it POD, make sure it's active once again and save. After creating those categories, now we will go over to the administration tab and go all the way down to preferences. Now once this window opens up, this is where we will actually give our category names to our proof of delivery and our rate confirmation. You will see here towards the bottom of the window where it says POD imaging category and rate confirmation category. Here for proof of delivery, we will go to the search icon and search the category that we created for proof of delivery, which in this case is POD. Once we click that, we will do the same for rate confirmation. Go over to the search icon and click on the rate confirmation category that we have created here. Once you're done with that, be sure to save it. Now, once we have completed those steps, we will get into the system automatically creating the invoices for you. Keep in mind that in this case, we will be using both loads 5871 with customer Alamo Aluminum and 5872 with customer CH Robinson Worldwide as examples. Once we know the loads we are using, we will need to be sure that both of our rate confirmation and proof of delivery are uploaded to these loads. To be able to upload those documents, we can go over to the blank paper icon on the right side of the load and click on that and in this window is where you will be uploading your documents. We will be going over to the green plus sign and here is where we have named our categories. So once we click on the arrow, options for the names that we have given certain things in our system will pop up and here we will go ahead and select the rate confirmation option that we have created. Once we have created that, we can go to select files and go ahead and grab your rate confirmation document and upload it to the system. Once we have done that, now we will need to do the same for proof of delivery. So once again, go over to the green plus sign under the categories, click on POD for proof of delivery, click on the select files button and upload your documents. Now once we have done that, we can go ahead and exit out of this window and you will notice that the blank paper icon has now turned blue, which means that both of our rate confirmation and proof of delivery documents have been uploaded. 
Now that we have uploaded our documents, we can go ahead and complete the loads. To do that, we go over to the right hand side where the status column is and go down to both of our loads. For load 5871, we will go to the drop down arrow and change the status from in route to completed. Once we have done that, we will locate load 5872 and we will do the exact same switch from in route to completed. Now, what this has done is it has taken both of those loads over to the delivered slash completed loads tab. So once we click here, we will see both loads 5871 and 5872 are here. Now that the loads are here, it has also created pending invoices. To get to those, we can go over to the accounting tab and go down to invoices. Once we are here, you will notice that we are on the pending tab and loads 5871 and 5872 are here. If you notice, on the very right hand side for both of the loads, you will see columns POD and RC, which stand for proof of delivery and rate confirmation. If we go down to both of the loads that we have completed, you will see that they both have green check marks on those columns. You will need to be sure that when your invoices are on this page, they have a green check mark for both of the columns for proof of delivery and rate confirmation. So now that our loads have created pending invoices, we can go ahead and actually invoice them now. To do that, we will go over to both of the loads that we are using and click on the white box. Once we click on it, a blue check mark will pop up so we will do that for load 5871 and for load 5872. Once we see that they are both selected, we will go over to the top right corner where the paper icon is and it will say create selected invoices. Once we click on that, those will disappear and go over to the invoiced tab. If we scroll right here at the very top, you will see 5872 and 5871. Now that our invoices have been invoiced, we will want to take a look at the invoice numbers. To grab those, we will go over to both of our loads that we have, which are 5872 and 5871, and go ahead and look at the invoice column. Now this is the invoice number for each of the loads that we have, which are 2594 and 2593. Now once we have those, we can go over to the Web Services tab and open up the Factoring Manager. Now your invoice will likely be at the very bottom, so either scroll to the bottom or just grab them and locate them. And we will see that here at the very bottom is invoice numbers 2593 and 2594. Now if we go over to the right side, we will see these icons, which are your documents that you have uploaded to these invoices. Both of these documents are easily reviewable if you simply click on them. You can review any information that you have uploaded. What we want to do now is be able to merge them. So over here to the right side, this is a merge icon. You will see here it says click to merge PDF documents. We will go ahead and click on that and save it. You will see that that's saved and this is the new merge icons that you see. We will go ahead and do the same for the next load. Go ahead and save that. And now both of our invoices have been merged. Keep in mind that if you have made any mistake, you can simply go to this icon right here and it says delete merged files. You can simply click on that and proceed with clicking OK. Now you can see that the icon has gone back to merge PDF documents. Now that we have merged both of our invoices, it is now time to send them over to the factoring company. To be able to do that, we go down to both of our invoices that we have, which are 2593 and 2594, and go over to the very right hand side where you see two white boxes. Once you see those, you can go ahead and click on those and click on the send invoices button. Now once this page pops up, keep in mind that the feature that I am about to explain is only an option for Love's factoring company. Any other factoring company that you are using does not have this feature as an option. So first off, 
you will see your disbursement of funds here, which is a total of $9,500. If you click on this first arrow, this is the kind of transfer that you want to go to your bank account. We have an ACH transfer and a wire transfer that has a fee of $12 that loves factoring charges you. In this case, we will simply be doing an ACH transfer. Once we do that, our second box, you will see third party fuel card amount. This is the exact amount of money that you would like to go to your fuel card. So for example, if we click here a total of $500, you will see that whenever this is sent over to your fuel card, the rest of the amount will go over to your bank. So in this case, we will have $500 out of the $9,500 go to our fuel card and $9,000 out of our $9,500 go to our bank account. Once we have done that, we can go ahead and click on the start process button. We'll be checking some statuses for some invoices. And here on the top right, you will see that a batch has been created. Once the system has created a batch for us, you will see that the batch has been sent and a transaction time as well as what factoring company you have used. If we go over to the right hand side and click on this icon, you will see the details of this batch, which will give us both of the invoices, the amount for each of the invoices that were on there, and you can go ahead and review any proof of delivery or rate confirmation documents that you have uploaded and you can also resend files to the factoring company anytime you want to. At the bottom here you have total invoices, total amount, and the last sent, which is the last time you sent files over to the factoring company. This and many more features with Always Track.